You suck, my friend. You suck. And you blow at the same time, somehow. But that's okay, it's just because you're a lowly reference design cooler, we understand. The GPU inside of you is really awesome, we love that. And you know, it's not all bad. The fact that you're such a lousy cooler is what's getting us so excited for all of the custom RX 5700 series cards that are coming out as we speak. Like this power color Red Devil RX 5700 XT that we're gonna be taking for a world today. You know, I'm sorry if I was being a little harsh back there. You know, I'm just, I'm just trying to make a point. If you, if you really need a shoulder to cry on, there's probably someone out there that you can ask. So like I mentioned, this is Power Colors Red Devil RX 5700 XT. And this is the limited edition that they sent over, which means it comes with a mouse pad. It's like a Red Devil branded mouse pad. And it retails for 10 bucks more than their standard edition, which is exactly the same. It just doesn't come with a mouse pad. So uh, the standard version retails for $439.99. This is $449.99, putting it $50 more expensive than the reference card. I think they're only doing one production run of the limited edition. And once those are sold out, they're gonna start selling the standard ones. So uh, if you really want that mouse pad, act fast. With that said, let's talk about the actual card, starting with how it looks. It's got kind of got this aggressive, gamery look to it. I mean, you can tell this is a gaming GPU. Uh, however, this side looks a bit more stylized than this side. This looks really clean, actually. Uh, and that's good because this is the side that most people will see in a typical build. However, it doesn't look bad. I, I don't think it's like overly obnoxious like certain cards are, especially because the look and feel, like the actual materials that they're using feel pretty premium. Like all the gray that you see on the shroud is actually plastic, but it's relatively thick. It like hardly wiggles at all. It's actually pretty rugged. And all the black plating you see is actually metallic, which makes the card look and feel a bit more high end. I particularly like the fact that some of the metal wraps around to this side and uh, kind of just frames out the red double branding here. Definitely looks nice. The card uses a triple fan design. These are 90 millimeter ball bearing fans and they are just right off the bat, I'll tell you, they are much quieter than the single blower style fan that's on the reference card. But more on that later. My two minor cosmetic gripes here are that the fans are glossy. Uh, they're a bit more reflective, which I generally prefer matte. And also so the stickers are red. I mean, I get it, Red Devil, you're going with the branding and stuff, but the rest of the card, they did such a good job kind of blacking out or neutralizing the color on the rest of the card, but these stickers are still just kind of an eyesore if you're trying to coordinate a different color scheme with the rest of your setup. I mean, obviously you can remove the stickers or spray paint over them, but that's a little extra work for the end user. Just a nitpick, just a little nitpick there. What Power Color definitely did right this time was add RGB. So previously Red Devil cards were only red LED lighting, I believe, but now we can customize the lighting to our heart's content. You can see that there's there's a nice little uh, edge lighting right here. I believe the Red Devil logo also lights up. I wasn't really looking at it when I was testing, uh, but we'll pop the card in the test bed in a moment and you'll be able to see it in action. If I remember correctly, there is zero RGB lighting on this side of the shroud, which does not bother me at all. And the biggest patch of lighting is on the back plate uh, where we have this devil design logo thing. So that's that's fun. Bear in mind, this is a 2.5 slot card. So it is a bit beefier uh, in size and physical size than the reference design. The heatsink is just massive. It looks really good, uh, but it's also got a lot of density there. Uh, you can see that it actually extends quite a bit beyond the custom PCB, which cuts off at around, I think it's like 240 or 250 millimeters. And then the actual heatsink goes up to about 300 millimeters. So make sure you have enough clearance in your case for that. Bear in mind, the reference PCB is actually longer than this. They shortened it for a really good reason, I think, is to actually open up some airflow or some ventilation on the back plate. So they cut out, they made these cutouts so air can more easily flow through that part of the heatsink, which I think is a really smart design. Uh, however, it does put your two eight pin connectors closer to the inside of the card as opposed to on the outside, which is where I generally prefer them to be. So even though I'm not 100% thrilled with where the connectors are, I can definitely admire why Power Color put them there. Also take note that the dual eight pin connectors are a slight bump up from the six plus eight pin that's on the reference card. Now, obviously Power Color didn't upgrade the PCB just so they could add an eight pin power connector and shorten it a little. They've actually beefed up the VRM as well, taking it from seven to 10 power phases, which is gonna allow for cleaner and more stable power going to the GPU. There's also a bio switch. Look at that. Two-step bio switch lets you toggle between silent, makes the card very, very quiet, like whisper quiet actually. And then OC mode, which bumps up the performance a bit, but it gets a little bit louder. Not a whole lot louder though. I mean, it's still a very quiet card as you'll hear in the sound test. I really like the back plate of this card. It's simple, looks sort of badass with the devil logo there. Again, a bit functional as well with the additional ventilation over the heat sink. And it's just a nice looking metal back plate. What more do you want? We've also got some IO on the back here, including one HDMI 2.0B and three display port 1.4 ports. These are illuminated as well. So if you're trying to fish around in the dark form, you'll have no problem locating these ports. They're uh, lit up in red though. Where's, where's the RGB there? 
Power color dropped the ball there. No, it's uh, no one cares. It's in the back of the card anyway. And then uh, ample cutouts here as well for some additional ventilation. So there's a walk around of the card and the hardware. I think they did a good job here. It looks nice. It feels premium. They used good materials. I like what they did with the VRM and the PCB, and I appreciate some of the hardware features that they've implemented. Now let's talk about performance, shall we? There's not a whole lot to talk about, if I'm being frank. I tested three different games because I was having some weird driver issues, not with this particular card, just with the RX 5700 series in general. Um, I was just having weird issues and it was like crashing the game at times. I mean, when it was working, it was flawless, but then it would have these fits and despite all the troubleshooting I did, I couldn't get it to work properly in the end. So I only tested three titles and from those results, I've concluded that this card is not a whole lot faster than reference. It's probably like two or three frames a second on average faster, um, which isn't a whole lot. It is something. It's definitely a little faster, but if you were expecting some crazy gains in terms of FPS uh, from getting a custom card like this, that's probably not gonna be the case. Where this card really excels is with temperatures and acoustics, and the improvements made in those two categories alone are enough to get excited about. Uh, because when you look at the temperatures for, for this dude right here, uh, we're getting around 83C right now. I mean, granted, we've been gaming for, or we've been running this test for uh, almost an hour now, um, but still, I mean, most people who are gaming are probably gonna be gaming for at least an hour session or longer, I would assume. Uh, so yeah, 83, 83C is definitely, definitely toasty. Uh, you can see our GPU clock is hovering anywhere from 1850 to 1900 megahertz on average, sometimes a little bit above that, but that's generally where we're seeing the clock speeds go. You can also hear that this thing is loud. It's very loud under load. And you know, rather than just continuing to talk about the noise levels, why don't I just give you guys the sound test now? So yeah, this card's quieter by like a lot. And that's great news, especially if you're putting this card inside of a case that has a lot of mesh or ventilation where there's a lot of sound leakage, it's not gonna be much of an issue at all. All right, at this point, I think we should get the Red Devil on the test bed and check out temperatures uh, and also clock speeds to see if they're, uh, how they compare to the reference. We have a Core i7-9700K that's running completely stock. That's on an Aorus Z390 Extreme motherboard with 16 gigs of G-Skill Sniper X DDR4, 3400 speed. All righty then, you're up, slugger. All righty, we've got the car on the test bed, it's looking pretty good. Look at that RGB. Look at that RGB. There it is, there she blows, folks. I'm glad we finally have lighting customization on these Red Devil cards. It's definitely been a long time coming. And here you can see that that Red Devil logo is in fact RGB backlit as well. I will say the color transitioning isn't the smoothest I've seen on a video card. It doesn't look bad, it's just not the smoothest I've seen. And that really only applies to certain lighting effects anyway. Uh, I did sort of lie about no RGB on this side of the shroud. There kind of isn't still, but you can sort of see it peeking through some of the gaps in the shroud there. Oh yeah, I gotta show you the back of the car too, where you'll find the Red Devil logo, all big and lit up and stuff. This is actually the nicest looking RGB element on the card. I think just because of the size and, and sort of the shape too, I think it works really well with backlighting. Power Color has their own software to configure and control all that lighting inside of their Devil Zone app application, uh, which is uh, very simple. You've got about a dozen or so effects that you can choose from right there. And uh, each of those have their own sliders for brightness and speed. There are no independent lighting zones from what I can tell. So whatever effect and color you choose will be applied to the entire card. But enough about trivial cosmetic features, Kyle. What about the temperatures? I'm glad you asked. We're about 35 minutes deep here into our uh, Unigen Heaven 4.0 run. Definitely enough time to get this thing fully heat soaked. And you can see we are hitting 73C. Oh, okay, actually we're running at 70C now with a max of 73. That is a whole 10 degrees cooler than, uh, than this boy, and this hot boy right here. So that's actually really good. So not only are you getting a much quieter experience, but the card's gonna be running significantly cooler as well. As far as clock speeds go, you remember this guy was hovering anywhere from 1850 to just over 1900 megahertz. Well, we're bumping that up about 30 to 50 megahertz on average. So you can see here, we're hovering around 1950 megahertz. Sometimes it dips down to 1890 or the very high 1800s. Uh, but for the most part, we're seeing roughly a 50 megahertz bump on average with our GPU core clock. It's also worth pointing out, however obvious it may be that if you were to manually overclock this GPU, uh, you would potentially see even higher performance than what we saw today, further widening the performance gap between it and the reference card. I think it's safe to say that I really like this card. However, it kind of has an advantage here of being the first and only custom RX 5700 XT that I've tested so far. And pretty much anything will seem awesome compared to the reference design. So while I don't have a good frame of reference on how this compares to other 
other custom variants of the RX 5700 XT, I can say for what it's worth that this is a significantly cooler, quieter, and a little bit faster card than AMD's in-house creation. That's all for now. Thanks for watching the show. Okay, if there's any other custom RX 5700 or 5700 XT cards you'd like me to check out, let me know down below. Apart from that, guys, I'm gonna get out of here. Thanks so much for watching the video. Toss a like on it if you enjoyed it and get subscribed for more tech stuff coming at you really soon. Have a good one, y'all. I'll see you in the next video. Pew! Like, a, like my inner Elvis was coming out. Okay, oh, it's still recording. Bye.